Good morning, everyone. Morning Java with Les. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, what I know and what I've seen growing up and all the traveling that I've done across the country and the people that I've visited with um, pertaining to depredation or um, the predators and the prey uh, population of species, if you will, uh, throughout the West, and mainly I'm talking about Wyoming, uh, just because I lived out there for about seven years. I witnessed firsthand a lot of killing by predators. I saw them kill. Um, I spoke with old game wardens uh, that were out there, uh, government trappers, you name it. I, I've, I've seen a lot with my own two eyes. And I want to kind of bring you up to speed with what I know and what I've seen, just so you have a better understanding uh, in your mind. Because as we hunt predators, we think, okay, I'm killing too many. Uh, I'm hurting the population. You're never, ever, ever going to run out of predators. Okay. Um, I think just like the reintroduction of wolves in the West, in in Montana, Idaho, uh, Wyoming, and I'm sure there's some in Utah and Colorado now, and I'm, I'm, I'm positive that we'll never be able to kill these wolves back off because number one, they're a, they're a whole different species of wolves. They're bigger, uh, they're more adaptable to uh, the change. Canada has been trying to rid them uh, from their landscape for eons and they've never been able to do it you won't be able to do it okay so despite what you hear uh, just let it go in one ear out the other uh, this is what i know okay i'm going to take you back to the the late 1960s uh 1970s in that time frame when i lived in saratoga wyoming i had the opportunity to speak with a game warden that patrolled in those years, in the 50s and the and 60s, 70s. And he was 81 years old when I talked to him. And I had lived out there for quite a few years. And I'm also getting some of this information from my good friend, Norm, that lives out in Wyoming. He was an outfitter for 55, 56 years. Uh, he saw a lot as well because he was out there every day uh, in the fall. So you see a lot with your own two eyes when you're out there, when you're walking, whenever you're uh, just paying attention to the landscape. So we'll get right into it. Around Saratoga, Wyoming, uh, the winter herd of deer that would come out of uh, Elk Mountain uh, Code, Pinnock Mountains, Kennedy Peak, uh, encampment. They would all migrate to the Beaver Hills, uh, which is straight to the east of, of encampment, Riverside, Wyoming, as well as uh, they'd go to Bagot Rocks, which is right south of Saratoga, about 10, 12 miles. And it, deer would come out of Colorado as well to winter. Um, but it was estimated that there was around 50,000 head of deer that would winter in those areas. Okay, now that's a lot of deer. But back in those days, they also had a year or so that they offered five buck tags to one person. Now how crazy is that? The deer numbers were that crazy. And people in that community said you could drive around and see 20 to 30 deer over 150 and you could usually always find 180 pluses you could you could find five or six of those in one day have you ever seen that in your life where you can go somewhere and you can see 180 inch mule deer standing out there and there's another one that one's 200 that one's that one's 195 i'm just trying to give you an idea of what used to be okay used to be um Back then, they had an abundance of coyotes. People still seen coyotes. They were around, uh, as well as bear. Uh, whenever you bought an elk tag, you also got a deer tag, and you also got a bear tag with it. So imagine going to the western states. You pay, probably back then, it was probably 200 bucks. You got an additional deer tag, and you got an additional bear tag. How 
freaking cool is that, right? So now your hunt just went from one species. Now if you happen to see a big mule deer buck, you can shoot him as well, or you see a bear. I can't tell you how many times I've been hunting and I see bears, okay? And I don't go to the west that much in the mountains hunting elk and mule deer and everything else. Uh, golden eagle, they were legal to shoot back in the day in the 60s, okay? They put a uh, I believe they made them uh, protected in 1969, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I believe it was 68 or 69, but you used to be able to shoot golden eagles. Um, some people might find that a little bit crazy, but golden eagles are probably, aside from wolves, aside from bears, they're probably the number one predator in, in the western states. You talk to any... Uh, uh, livestock producer uh, in Montana, eastern Montana, where they have uh, sheep. Golden eagles, they migrate out of Canada each year just for the lambing and the antelope fawns. They kill a tremendous amount of livestock and the, the prey species uh, that we like to hunt and we like to eat as well, the antelope and mule deer, uh, full-grown mule deer, full-grown antelope. There's a total misconception that a bird like that does not kill a full-grown animal. I had outfitters tell me they saw eagles, groups of eagles trying to kill bull elk. So you can take it for what it's worth. I've seen golden eagles kill antelope in broad daylight in Wyoming, and I actually had video footage of it. So um, I can dispute it with anybody. Um, antelope, there was an abundance of antelope back in those days. One of the most prominent areas or units in Wyoming for killing a Boone and Crockett type antelope. Uh, Boone and Crockett is just a measurement of the, the, the horns, if you will. And the number one unit back in those days was Unit 57, which is west of Rollins. It runs down to uh, the state line in Colorado, and it would run over to, I believe, the Bitter Creek Road that runs south. And so it was a huge expanse of country. Back in those days, they had permits for 2,500 head of antelope, but, and that was just the bucks. And I'm going to tell you, too, back in those days, Carbon County, Wyoming, which encompassed a lot of Unit 57, had over 1 million head of sheep, plus they had cattle, plus they had the abundance of antelope, okay? I just want you to remember that because we're going to get into this a little bit more. And I apologize if this is going to get lengthy or wordy, but you need to know this, okay? Um, despite what you read on other forums or websites, I'm telling you what I know because I've talked to people that have lived it and they're 80 plus years old, both of them, and they told me, and I believe it because I've seen it with my own two eyes, okay? The antelope, there was abundance. Mountain lion back in those days in the mountains, there probably wasn't that many. The mountain lion population has really went up, uh, and we'll get back to that. But there was probably a limited amount of antelope or a limited amount of mountain lions back in the day. Okay, now we're gonna we're kind of gonna fast forward to today, right? Um, I heard the deer population out at Saratoga, Wyoming, and in that wintering range, I've heard from the guys, the old timers that go to the game and fish meetings because they always hold a game and fish meeting in that community. And whenever I went there, there was never any guys my age. It was always guys that were 60, 70, 80 years old. Those are the guys attending the meetings because they've seen it before it got to this point, okay? When I lived in Saratoga, I went to the meetings as well. And what I'm going to tell you, what it always boils down to, every time when you're dealing with a wildlife biologist, their scapegoat, if you will, is always habitat, okay? That's what it went down to was habitat, okay? We're losing all these deer because habitat. They would bring the sage bush in and say, these deer 
they, they, they nibble on this sagebrush and we're losing our sagebrush. There's something going on. We're losing our sagebrush. Okay. Um, yeah, they can make that argument, but I don't believe it. I don't believe it for one second. I don't believe it for two seconds. Um, I live there. I've seen it. You cannot go near the, the, the deer wintering grounds without seeing coyotes. Every time you drove near there, the mountain lions were hanging out right there. Um, now they're saying there's 7,000. I would venture to say it's probably more like 4,000. So basically, you take a lifetime of wildlife. You put man in, in charge of it, if you will. You start protecting predators and then you see a massive decline. It's very easy to say that it's some other thing other than depredation or predators killing the prey species. When you want to protect predators, you're not going to say that it's them causing it. When I went to the meeting, this gentleman that was the wildlife biologist, you know what he told me? Because I asked the question. I said, what is your depredation of these prey species? What percentage? He told me less than 1%. Okay. So ironically, when I'm driving around and I see an antelope getting killed by a golden eagle, or I witness all these carcasses of coyotes running the, the deer down on the ice and killing them on the ice. And they don't even have to kill them on the ice. They just kill them wherever they want to kill them. They're, they're still getting away from a coyote. When he's hunting, he's killing, okay? That's just the way it is. But he said less than 1%, okay? I went to college, got my animal science degree. I went to class with guys that are, were going to be wildlife biologists. I was in class with them. I have a background of farming, uh, ranching, hunting, fishing. I'm out there all the time. My good friend that's 81 years old, he said, Les, back in the day when we, when we had game wardens that cared, their faces were always windburnt, sunburnt, chapped. They were out there watching their wildlife. They were watching the game because they their livelihood depended on it. Now, sit in front of a computer and say, okay, we flew it yesterday and we're going to say there was 7,000 deer. Okay, you counted 7,000 deer. They don't. They just look at a an area and say, oh, I think there's 100 there. I think there's 20 there. I think there's seven there as they're buzzing over. And then they take the whole range of things and do that. They spread it all out. Okay, we got 7,000 head. Okay, I call BS. Okay, you can love me or hate me. I don't care. But anyway, Back in the day, there was an abundance of coyotes. There's still an abundance of coyotes today. The ex-game warden told me, because I specifically asked him at coffee one morning, he, he never showed his face that often, but I saw his vehicle there one day, and I pulled in, and I wanted to talk to him, and he was in his 80s, and I specifically asked him, and I, 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 I'm not going to say his name because that's irrelevant now uh, because he passed away. But I said, why are we losing all of our deer? What is going on with all of our deer, our antelope, everything? And he looked right at me. He said, it's predators, Les. He said, they're going to tell you it's, it's something else, but it's predators. He said, when I was younger, and he said, we could use poison. He told me that just himself, this is one person, he loved his wildlife so much that he was putting poison out. He used horses and sheep and, and injected them with poison and he would deer, do it near a water source, the river, because when the animals ate it, they went to the water and a lot of times they died on the ice because they were licking the ice, they needed water. But if you, if you can't handle what I'm telling you right now, just click away. It, it, it's not cruel if, if you understand coyotes and understand management and understand having a healthy population. But he would fly it and he said all of the baits that he would put out, he guesstimated per winter he was killing roughly 2,500 coyotes just himself in that valley from Saratoga down to the state line. Today, there's nobody killing. I'm going to say the most amount of coyotes is getting killed in that whole valley is 200. When I lived there, I was killing 130 to 170 coyotes, but I was killing them all over. 
You know, I wasn't just keying on one general area. So, coyotes back then, you had abundance and abundance because he was still able to kill 2,500. But what you do with a coyote, what, what, what people don't understand, when you kill a coyote in the winter, that coyote is not pressuring that prey species anymore. And it takes the coyotes that are left to have pups. That gives the prey species a chance to have their babies and they have less pressure on them. That's what a lot of people fail to tell you, okay? When you take an adult coyote out of the population, you're letting that prey species, which is the antelope, the, the mule deer, the white-tailed deer, the elk, you're letting them have less pressure on them. So whenever it comes to the spring, those, canim those animals are able to have their babies with less pressure. So that way, the 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 survival rate of the fawns is higher. So instead of seeing a doe with zero fawns, you see a doe with triplets or twins. How cool is that, okay? We eat those animals. I'm not eating coyotes, okay? So this is just one story of the coyotes, okay? He was killing 2,500 coyotes a winter, and that's when the prices were high, but he let them be. He was just killing, killing, killing. And this is a game warden. Yeah, there's no game wardens doing that now, okay? It, it, and perhaps there's one out of a hundred. I don't know if there is, and you're watching this video, thank you very much from a sportsman, from a conservationist like myself. I really appreciate it. Because you understand the deal, the real deal, okay? Bear, back in the day, you got a, a permit with your elk tag. And you know how many people were hunting in the woods after elk? They never saw bears. There was the occasional guy that would get one and another camp would get a bear. How cool of an adventure is that? Now, bears are pretty much protected. They're, they're on a quota system. So you take the whole snowy range area, you may, the, the season will shut down when they kill five sows. Okay, when a bear comes into a bait, you can't tell if it's a sow. You can you can look at body features and say, okay, it's got broad shoulders. It's by itself. It don't have babies, so it must be a uh, a boar. Boom! Oops, it was a sow. You got to call that in there. That now there's a sow killed. And, and when people are out there hunting for bear, they know they're against a a, a deadline. So they see a bear come in, they're just whacking it. They don't care. Because they know they may not get to kill a bear this year or next year because it's a race to see how how quickly they can get five bears killed in that area. Okay? It's kind of crazy how it all works. But maybe you'll understand bears don't just eat grass. You know what they're eating now? They're eating elk calves or eating deer calves. They actually hunt them, okay? They know where the, the deer have them. They... It, <laughs> These animals are so smart. They they have to eat every day, okay? They understand, okay, I got a good patch of berries over here. This is where I'm going to go. I caught a fawn over there yesterday. I know there was three more there or two more. Let's go over there and look around for a fawn. They smell them, okay? It's no problem for them. No problem, okay? Um, the golden eagle. Back then, it was legal to shoot golden eagles. Now, you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I had heard from my good friend that uh, a man has a strong a grip of 200 PSI when, when you can squeeze. Uh, Eagle has 1,800 PSI. Um, they live to be 50 years old, okay? If you have a predator that's in the population for 50 years minus a natural disaster, running into a wind turbine, getting struck by lightning on a pole, flying into some electrical lines, that predator's going to be killing day in, day out. And I can tell you from all the times out coyote hunting in the middle of the winter, most of these eagles are not killing rabbits. They kill the occasional jackrabbit. The, the thing about predators, they enjoy the kill. It, it's an obsession to them. If a coyote 
can chase a rabbit here or he's got a deer over there, he's going to take the deer because the risk reward is so much better. The risk is a little higher and the reward is so much greater because he's going to call all his buddies, Hal, and they're going to come in and eat, but they're going to do it for him too when he's having a tough time hunting. So the risk re reward's a lot higher. Antelope, back in the day, there was an abundance. My friend told me there was 2,500 tags issued in Unit 57. And this has been probably in 2008, 2009, right in there. You know what? how many tags there was? And I told you that there was a million head of sheep that used to graze in Carbon County, Wyoming. There was all the cattle that was in Carbon County, Wyoming. Now, there's hardly any sheep. So that Unit 57 is just solid country for antelope. But you know what? Limited quota. Last I heard, I don't know what it is today, but back in about 2008, I believe it was right close to 250 tags. So you go from 2,500 tags when there was a million head of sheep grazing, there was cattle grazing, people were killing the crap out of coyotes, you were in check with your, your predators, um, the, the golden eagle was legal to shoot, and I'm gonna tell you more stories about this. Now they're protected, Nobody's really hunting coyotes. Nobody's killing them like they were back then. Um, but you have 250 head uh, 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 buck tags for that unit, and you're blaming it on habitat. Okay? Okay, so be it. Um, mountain lion, now there's limited quota. When I lived at Saratoga, they had one year just in the snowy range right there. That's between Laramie, Saratoga encampment right in there. The limit, the quota on mountain lions was 25. You take one lion, he kills, let's just say he kills once a week, one deer a week. They killed that year on the quota of 25, they killed the 25 lions, okay? Now it's down to probably five, six. They won't let you kill. They wanted to do the test on it and see. They, they knew they had mountain lions, okay? <laughs> One, one lion kills one deer a week. That's 52 deer a year. And that does not count coyotes coming in, pushing the mountain lion off, eating the deer. So that lion has to kill every three days now. So he's killing two deer a week. It goes 52 weeks. You had 25 lions. Let's just say there was 50 lions. 50 lions times 52 weeks. 2,500 deer a year, more than that, okay? So you take you take just the predators. They're probably killing more than the hunters, okay? I just want you to put this in your mind, okay? Understand it. Western big game is going down, and it has been going down. It's no longer a family affair where you can, you can take fathers, sons, and daughter and grandpa and head out to the west and go on a, a, a week-long hunting adventure where you're seeing game and you're actually getting to take something home with you. Now, the tag prices are 600 bucks for an elk, 400 for a mule deer. You go out there, you hunt a week, you don't even see one, okay? When I asked that game warden, I said, what's the problem? What is the problem? He said it's predation. It's predators. You've got to kill the predators. You're always going to have them, okay? I know I keep harping this, but it's gotten to me at a point that I just, it makes me sick to my stomach, you know? Because I'm going to say stuff like this, I'm going to probably have a target on my head. But it's truth. There's no BS behind it. You can take all the numbers you want. You can crunch them any way you want. You can always use habitat as your, your overflow to put the blame on. I'm calling BS because those cattle are still making gains. They're still foraging out there. Do they eat the same? I see mule deer eating in the grass. So you can't tell me that they're just eating sagebrush. I call BS. The elk, they get pushed out of the mountains. They go in the flats now. 
because the predator, the mountain lion, if you see your buddy get killed by a mountain lion, why the heck do you want to be there? Get the heck out of Dodge. Go out into the plains. We'll talk more about this. But it was my morning Java rant with Les. I hope you enjoyed this. Please share this with friends. Subscribe to my channel. I hope all of you are well. And for all of you across the globe that are watching me, I totally appreciate you and I'm calling you friend. Thank you for watching and hope you have a wonderful day.